My martial arts studies began in the early 60s. They include Okinawan Shoryu Karate, Judo, and Jiu-Jitsu, which is my martial art of choice. When I'm in close quarter combat, I prefer throws, chokes, and locks to take out my opponent. Then there's Terry Wilson. He's our California State Director. Terry's been in the martial arts for years and all over the world and all over the world and trained with some of the top people in the world. He made himself available to them, took the time to do it, took the time to learn things, which a lot of people don't take the time to actually learn. They just go through and get a little bit here, now he's here, and a little bit there, where to me, Terry's learned it all. And he's actually, he's battle tested, combat tested. He has used all, everything that he's done. And if he shows you something, you know it's going to be a, a technique that you can use. Now from here, step over, sit down, touch with your own foot. One of the aspects I especially yeah. like about jiu-jitsu is that you take advantage of your attacker's size and weight. If a technique is done properly by anyone, even a small child, can effectively off-balance and subdue a much larger person. That's how the technique works. Okay. And... Not bad, but this time, take it more in like this. Go in like this, more like into your belt, okay? And this can take a bigger person down. <laughs> yeah, like that. Very good. And he's versatile, and we can switch from Muay Thai to Jiu Jitsu to Judo to Karate to Aikido to whatever. I mean, Terry's pretty much the full package right there. He's got everything that you need. And if I have a question, I always like to. Mold over with Terry, uh, Colonel Gifford, constantly, same thing. When we talk on the phone and we have questions back and forth each other conversations, we go, you know what, we need to talk to Terry about this when we see him. Because we know he's going to know what he's talking about. Just a tap on the shoulder, not a strike, but just a tap. His natural reaction is to roll forward. And as soon as that action happens, Ron's going to go down. And then on weekends, I did the martial arts stunt show. Wow, that's Studio. yeah, that's another thing. And that that's I my favorite photograph of Benny Arcades. What a great sport! I said, <laughs> Benny, you go out, your brothers flank you, and you drop into a kubadash, and I'm going to do a flying jump kick over your head. He goes, Right, what? <laughs> and he did it. <laughs> I said, Trust me, where are you going to start the jump from? I said, The back step. What? <laughs> oh, no way. He did it. He really did it. it was and, fun. A, and the picture, whoever got that picture was and awesome. Ayakuda. Oh, really? I, Very I, nice. I, I am forever grateful to that guy. He's the same guy that took the picture of me on the cover of uh, Master's Martial, Martial Arts Magazine. Martial Magazine, right, which you can also see both on his website and on mine. Yeah. Very cool. But you've done a lot of writing for a lot of different types of magazines, Martial Arts Magazines, yeah. Pet Magazines. Yeah, for four years I was a full-time freelance writer. I covered everything, uh, martial arts, pets, uh, movie stars, profiles, and I also was the very last person to do a story on Ronald Reagan. That's right, I've read that. I did his yeah. cover story, but I did something different. I had met Mr. Reagan at mm -hmm. the Bloomingdale's estate mm -hmm. back in the days when I was directing. Actually, Alfred Bloomingdale bought his wife, Betsy Bloomingdale, <laughs> uh, a TV show so that um, while she was busy doing the TV show, he could go out and do Whatever he wanted Other to do. Other things. <laughs> uh, and, and in the process, I met a lot of interesting people, including the Reagans. Mm -hmm. And uh, Mr. Reagan came by one day, <clears throat> and we're having a chat. And I had just come back from doing a shoot in Costa Rica. And <laughs> it was my first time on a horse, and my butt was so sore, I couldn't sit down. Mr. Reagan said, Terry, have a seat, please. I said, I'd love to, sir, but my ass is sore. <laughs> <laughs> and he thought you were talking about your donkey, right? <laughs> Uh, and, and so we laughed about that, and it turned out Mr. Reagan was the very last mounted officer in the U.S. Cavalry. Yes. And he told me all kinds of stories about that, and uh, he also told me, I had to go back to Costa Rica and finish up the shoot, and he also showed me how to pad the saddle and what to put on my sore so, derriere. Oh. So, um, so flash could, forward, mm -hmm. uh, uh, I, he's now... Uh, governor mm -hmm. and i've been invited to a little soiree in beverly hills and i'm sitting at the nobody table as it should be and nobody wants to talk to me because you don't know who this person is maybe he's 
Look, yeah. So I'm sitting there just, you know, okay, it's a free dinner. Uh, <laughs> and Mr. Reagan comes in, and you can tell that he's got his route marked, mm -hmm. his bodyguards. Oh, yeah, and they know purposely, exactly. purposely, purposely mm -hmm. doing the route. And you know yeah, this yes, well. Yes, I know very well. And then he turned around, and he caught my eye. And he made a detour, leaving his detail. Right in the behind. Wind. And he comes up to me, he slaps me on the shoulder, says, Terry, how's your ass? <laughs> and I said, thank you, sir, it's fine. And he laughed. And after that, everybody at that table wanted to be yeah, my best friend. Yeah, they paid attention to you. <laughs> I, know how that, I grew up in politics. I yeah. know exactly what that is. Yeah, that and, so. you know, I, I did a story on uh, Bill Putney. Um, he's the man that created the War Dog Museum, and he's the man that actually trained the dogs in World War II. Wow. Uh, nobody had ever done it before. They mm -hmm. didn't know how to do this. Mm -hmm. And um, he, he and I became very good friends. Bill gave me all of his material. And I know the story of the war dogs backwards and forwards. Wow. And uh, he, before he died, he said, Terry, do me a favor, try to make a movie out of this. So I've got a killer script, oh, and it's then true. Oh, we need to do that. And that. In fact, today, I think that would really be apropos. Oh, it's perfect, it's perfect. Wow. And my problem so is. So if there's anybody out there that's interested, let us know. Yeah, that's well, I've really had good. that problem before. I want somebody genuine. Mm -hmm. I've dealt with so many, you know, I think uh, Gallagher said it best, you know, Hollywood is like a box of granola. What ain't a fruit or a nut is a flake, <laughs> you know? <laughs> oh, that's and funny. I'm trying to find the people that aren't flakes. Right, right. Well, I've got I think you've got to find somebody who has a heart for this because this is the story that it should be told. It needs to and, be told. Yeah. I've also written a script about the world's record. I set back in my DJ days at WOXR in Oxford, Ohio, when I stayed on the air nonstop 24-7 playing the hits of the day for 200 hours straight. And we did the broadcast from the window of the Ox House restaurant. The storyline reads a lot like American Graffiti meets Animal House. And you can actually read the uh, backstory about the marathon in my book, Life's Too Short and So Am I, which is available on Amazon.com. I just think they ought to make a movie on your life, Terry. <laughs> I, I, I'm waiting for that. Somebody who's intelligent is going to do that because you are one of the funniest guys out there. And even when you don't mean to be funny, you're funny. Yeah, that's sad, so. true. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I enjoy it. I really enjoy you a lot, Terry. Well, let's see. What else What else have you done? I know you've worked for places like Wealth TV. You've, uh, you've I worked for five years for a company called Wealth TV. And uh, basically, it was like the lifestyles of the Rich and, rich and famous, famous Network. Yes. And I went around the world hosting and producing and writing 30-minute uh, specials. I feel like I'm standing in the middle of a picture postcard. Hi everybody, my name is Terry Wilson, and yes, we are in the south of France. This is Monaco, and today, Wealth on the Water has traveled to this exotic location to take you on a tour of some of the most expensive yachts in the world. It was cool, I got to cover uh, Monaco, all, all of the yacht shows, all of the yacht shows. I got to hang with people that wore dickies. You just don't get to do that anymore. Lovey. For those of you that watch Gilligan's Island, lovey. I uh, got to do that. Covered really cool car shows. Oh, oh. man. Met, some, met people that had more money than car God. has liver pills, <laughs> And their car collections are phenomenal. You know what I really appreciate about you? And I've watched a lot of those wealth TV programs that you've put out. And what I love is you are, um, it doesn't matter who you're talking to, Terry. You bring out the best in them and, and the, the, all of those interviews, um, whether you know everything there is to know about that person or not, doesn't matter because they tell you their whole lives. I mean, you just have a, a way of bringing that out in people and it's something I'd like to learn to do. You because... know, I, I think interviewing is easy. Uh, I, I've, I used to teach at a couple of broadcasting schools and, and I would say just listen to whomever you're talking to. Don't come in with a bunch of preset questions on a piece of paper. Mm -hmm. Listen, that person's interesting. Have a basic concept of what you want to chat about and just have a conversation. We're going to take a ride down Route 66. And these are my favorite guys. Every time I come to Hot August Nights, I've got to check out Route 66. First of all, we'll start with the one with the really pretty legs. Lee. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
Hey, did you know that this guy and I used to work together many moons ago? Really? I yes. didn't know that. Well, I did the morning show that would start like at 5.30 or 6 in the morning, and Marathon Man here did the midnight to 6 shift. Oh. And he had the craziest show. Well, for one thing, um, he was dependent on the general manager being asleep between midnight and 6 because uh -oh. Terry threw the format out the window. He took requests. Every bartender, every cab driver, every 7-Eleven clerk, every nurse, every cop in town was tuned in uh, to the Marathon Man, Terry. And I think that's exactly yeah. what it is. And you are a very good listener. I, I've watched you before. You pay attention to the people around you. You listen to them and then you're able <laughs> and then I'm you're sorry. able to take that take that interview to places that normal people, you know. I can go catch but fish is fun. Fish is drama. Fish is millions of dollars. Watch how this works. I pull the string and he, and he goes this off. Fun. This is great. I doubt, I know I wouldn't if I walked in and tried to interview some of these people. I, um, but that's more time I spend with you. Hopefully that, that'll help me. Well, you're doing a great job to, today. Well, that's because I'm interviewing you. If it oh, was anybody okay. else here, who knows what I'd be doing. But you're so much fun to talk to. And, and I know you've been to Thailand. And I'm really interested to know, um, obviously you were covering Muay Thai in Thailand. Yeah, uh, Bob Cheney, a friend mm -hmm. of ours, mm -hmm. a great Muay Thai trainer, yeah, really, really um, good. has taken me to Thailand a handful of times. And I've trained in several gyms over there. And I've gotten the Muay Thai experience firsthand. Each trip I bring along Terry Wilson. Terry was the writer of the year for Inside Kung Fu. He's an Emmy Award winner. He was the guy that, that did the WK shows way back in the 70s and 80s. He was the head of the film crew and the production. Uh, Terry's very experienced, but he comes around to document these things. Because one thing that people, when they come to trip, this is a memory of a lifetime. And what better way to preserve that than on film? So if Terry does that, uh, he not only gives them, you know, keep preserves this moment, this training experience that they had, okay, but he's come over to Thailand so many times, he understands the culture, he knows all the trainers, he knows the people at the stadium, so he gets into places that other people can't get in with his camera. They were televising the fight the other night, which never, never let a guy come in with a camera. They let Terry walk in and, and shoot it, you know, it was televised. I gotta tell you, those are some tough little suckers. They know how to train. Boy, those guys work. And uh, while I was there, uh, I also did a lot of filming for Bob, and I captured the fighter's experience firsthand on videotape. And it's really awesome, and hopefully we'll show some of that. Can we? Absolutely, yeah, and in very, fact, I, very good. I've got uh, two 30-minute uh, specials good enough to be on any network, and uh, it's not just all training. I mean, it's about the training, but the storyline just kind of developed. I mean, uh, the first time we went over, uh, you know, Bob, <laughs> Bob can have a temper. Right, I know. We all know that, yeah. <laughs> and, um, okay, let me tell you this story because, boy, I don't want to get in trouble with these guys. They don't fool around. Uh, what the Are heck? we far oh, enough oh, away? Oh, oh, what the heck? Who's going? No. No. Who oh, no. No. Um, okay, we were training in. Uh, if something we're... happens to me, guys, you'll know why. Well, it won't be you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we're in Koh Samui. Uh, the fighters, uh, this is going to be their first professional fight in a real ring with Muay Thai fighters. Um, the one thing, these, these guys are novice kickboxers. And these kickboxers, are Americans. You're Americans. Mm -hmm. And they're novice kickboxers. And they've had a little training along the way in Muay Thai. And so Bob worked to deal with the um, stadium owner. You get my drift? Hey, you got it. Get my drift? <laughs> and and, and uh, a gentleman's agreement was made that no elbows would be used because our fighters just weren't... Trained with trained elbows. Trained with that. Elbows can kill. And, and, and of course, the, the Thai guy said, well, it doesn't matter. We're going to kill these stupid Americans anyway. Yeah. Well, I got news for you. They didn't. We got in the ring, and we were kicking some major Thai yeah. ass with the, the, you know, Bob's a good trainer. Yeah, he's a very good and, trainer. And um, I had a, a fellow run up to me in the audience, and I'm filming uh, up topside, and it's a, a Brit that I had met about a week prior. And he said, hey, lad, I thought I'd come and let you know. Is that a great accent? Sort of. Uh, yeah, kind Australian. of British, Australian. Yeah. <laughs> and he says, uh, I want you to know the fix is in. Like, what are you talking about? The fix is in. He says, the fix is in. To warn your lads. And I'm thinking, warn my lads. They're in the middle of a fight. And all of a sudden, the ties start letting loose with elbows. Oh, my god! And split one guy's head yeah, open and hurt another really guy. That's really dangerous. Got it all on tape. Well, Bob went bananas. And Wild Man Denny was with Yo, him. Oh, I remember Wild Bill. I and mean, Wild Man Denny, Denny was, uh, was king of the yeah. cage, yeah. was there with Bob. And I caught it all on tape. 
they went nuts. They ran over the ring, threatened the referee, threatened the fighters. The stadium went nuts because in the stadium, nobody knew we had made this right, arrangement. Right. They just thought the Americans were being a yeah, bunch of couldn't handle the elbows. sissies and couldn't handle the elbows. Mm -hmm. And now I'm, I'm, I've been in riots before. And I'm standing there with the camera, surrounded by a lot of very angry Thai people. <laughs> and um, uh, bottom line is, uh, there were some raw, uh, bottles and some harsh words. And, and at, the, at the very last moment, uh, things got tamed down, things settled down That's before, before anything really bad happened. So, you know, Terry, we've talked about a lot of different things in your life, but the one thing I would like to talk a little bit more about is your martial arts. And I know you've had some really, really wonderful experiences. You've actually lived with, with some very famous instructors. You've worked with a lot of people. You've done more in the martial arts, I think, than people really know about. And I'd like to talk about that. I began training in the early 60s at the very first karate school in Dayton, Ohio. In fact, it may have been the first one in the country. It was Shorin Ru. Jim Wax was the instructor. Jim trained under Nagamini Sensei when he was in the Air Force in Okinawa. And he was Nagamini's first American black belt. That school produced several well-known martial artists like Frank Grant, Tommy Harris, and Bobby Yarnell. Um, I remember uh, when I was a wee lad of... 13 or 14, whatever it was, uh, Master Nagamini came into Dayton. And back then, all we did was, you know, Okinawan kicks were to the stomach, and we didn't kick to the head. Right. Okay? So I asked him, I said, Sir, um, if I wanted to kick somebody in the head, how would I do that? He go, Oh, kihe, us, stance. So I go, Phew. He goes, kihe. And he raised his knee up. He had, a, he had a massive, like a huge knuckle on his foot. And he raised that thing up and he went flip, caught me right in the groin. Oh brought me right gosh. down, right down to his knee. And then he brought that and foot. And he kicked you in the and head. And he brought that foot back and it stopped it right between the eyes. Oh my and, he, gosh. and then he smiled and he went, yeah. Yeah. Oh my God. A year later, I met an absolutely crazed Catholic brother at the University of Dayton, and he taught a form of combat jiu-jitsu that he had learned while living in Japan for 25 years. It was real old-school stuff, arm twisting, joint breaking, lots of techniques that will just hurt you six ways from Sunday, and of course, I loved it. So I started cross-training in karate and jiu-jitsu for another five years. Then in 1970, I moved to Los Angeles, where I got a job directing shows for KCOP-TV. One of those shows was Boxing from the Olympic, and that's where I met the famous Judo Gene Lavelle. And he invited me to train with him and the others at the Welcome at Dojo at LA City College. And in the process, Gene and I became fairly good friends. We've stayed in touch over the years, and I've written many magazine articles on the famous pink geed wonder Judo Gene Lavelle. You know, of course, I've trained with uh, Gene LaBelle, the great Judo Gene LaBelle. And, and to me, that's the pinnacle of my success right there, yeah. Judo Gene. Mm -hmm. Great guy. And I, I mean, I have pictures of you when you were very young with... with well, at least I was skinny. Gene I don't know how uh, young You were I was. pretty young there. Your hair was longer. <laughs> Must have around the time you did the, the uh, karate uh, yeah, shows yeah. and stuff, you were... Uh, in 1974, I produced, directed, and was host of a one-hour special on the martial arts that won an Emmy, and it featured all of the top names of the era. And among them was Hapkido master Bong Su Han, famous for his Billy Jack films. I really was cross-training with everybody. When I did my martial arts special, uh, I met Bong Su Han, oh. one of the nicest yeah. guys on the planet. Yeah. I gotta tell you, Master Han is just a sweetheart. And so I, uh, I helped him with his English. He did a lot of movies, but his English was suspect right, at the yeah, time. Right. So I helped coach him, and he taught me privately. After 10 years in Los Angeles, I relocated to San Diego to co-host a TV show called PM Magazine. And while there, I began training with Bud Cothran and Carlito Lanada, a master in the Filipino art of Contao. I also did some more old school backyard karate training under Gunnery Sergeant Master Victor Hughes, who had himself trained with Masoyama when he was stationed in Japan. Really? Uh... And I don't know if you know this or not, but I, I moved to Saipan 
I was working. No, I, uh, didn't know that. I was working for Guam Cable Television. I was an mm -hmm. anchor and a CNN correspondent. Uh, but I went there predominantly because of my love of uh, history, World mm -hmm. War II history, and I wanted to explore the island on somebody else's dime. Wow. And I never in, in my life expected to find a judo school or jujitsu mm -hmm. school on Saipan. Saipan is like this big. Yeah, it's very small. Yeah. Very small. And I'm asking around and, and they say, well, there's a guy uh, over there. His name's uh, Bruno De La Poza. And I just froze because if there's anyone I'd ever want to train under aside from Gina Bell, it's Bruno De La Poza. And I said, you've got to be kidding me. This guy's on the island. Wow. So I went over and I met Bruno. <clears throat> Bruno is the Italian Gene LaBelle. Is he? Oh my he is God. the Italian Gene ah. LaBelle. And so I go do the proper thing, introduce myself. I'd like to train with you. So have you had any training before? I said, just oh, I, 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 I went on to my lineage. And he said, and he's a big man. Mm -hmm. like Gene. Mm -hmm. He says, come, show me what you have. So I go in hard, bam. And next thing I know, I'm looking at the floor. Boom, he bounced me. Oh. And he helped me up. And he says, oh, good, you're very fast. Come again. Not fast enough. So I come in and do a double move. <laughs> Boom, Boom, back on the floor. He goes, oh, good, you, you're strong like bull. <laughs> One more time. And I right come Terry's out. asking I himself, I, do I really want to do this? I don't even know why I went in. I should have just knocked myself out. And of course, he spun me around and uh, put me down on my knees and put me in a chokehold. And I said, he said, and he says, oh, you're very good. You're very, very good. And I said, well, listen, if I'm so strong like a bull, so very, very fast and so very, very good, how do I keep winding up on the floor? And he said, because I'm the great Bruno. And he choked me out. Oh my god. Put gosh. me to sleep. Oh, I, I wish we had video of that. Over the years, I've also trained in Shinto Yoshinru Jiu Jitsu with my friends and peers at the Sierra Nevada Dojo in Carson City. Strike him with a rich hand because you're setting him up here. the throat. Notice on the trap, I've already moved your body right forward a little bit. Now, you see here, I come over. This is, if this is loose, you got me here. Shake my own hand. Now I'm going to push down. Okay, I'm going to pull up and I'm going to turn down all at the same time. Push down, pull up, turn down. One move. Hello. This is just technique. You're doing it in the fight. Okay, so here we go. Turn back, reach high, keep this flat. See how I come up? Grab my wrist. Fall back like I'm taking a nap. Keep this locked. Put that right over your head. Breaks the shoulder. With every action, having a reaction, you must know where your opponent's balance points are. Okay? He is good here, here, and here. That's his, that's his four corners. He has no balance right here. Okay? Subsequently, if I move the center point on the compass, I change his balance point. Okay? His balance point is now right there. So if I were to do like an Osoto Garrett, but I don't have the strength to do it with this hand, I come around, I break his balance point. If you just tap it, now see, I can just lock him up here if I want, but I'm going to bow and arrow him. Ah. Any size. Thank you. Continue, please. Prior to his passing, I was afforded the opportunity to meet the system's founder, Master Douglas Gross. Several of his senior students and I traveled to Peoria, Illinois, where we spent a few days doing kata, jiu-jitsu techniques, and self-defense drills under his very watchful eye. He started training with my teacher, Mike Hancock, in Ohio uh, well back in the 60s, and I think you started in the 60s. 62, okay. We are <coughs> promoting Mr. Wilson to Hachidam, 8th degree level. <laughs> Where else can we go, Terry? I mean, there's just been so many stories that, you know, I've... I think we've talked about 
more things than people are going to be interested in hearing. I think. <laughs> I don't. I don't. I mean, I, I just think that you're one of the most interesting people out there. And there's well, I just. Uh, that. But we can, if, if it's time to say goodbye, time to say goodbye. Well, the reason it is, I promised John Atkinson I would go up to his uh, dojo oh, okay. in Dayton and uh, work with some of his uh, Awesome. Belts. Well, see if you can get some footage up there and we can use it. Well, we'll do that. Awesome. Dana, okay. thank you so much. Oh, it's been Terry, a real pleasure thank you. chatting this with was, you. This was really fun. Hope you all enjoyed it. Life's too short and so am I. Amazon.com, three bucks. Great book. By the way, you know, I've sold so many copies that I'm a 60 heir. Wow. Yeah, I made 60 bucks. If you wow. buy it, that'll be 62. <laughs> it's definitely worth reading, and someday it will be a movie. So I really highly recommend buying the book. And if your audience comes through, we can go to McDonald's and supersize. Oh, yeah. that sounds good to me. Bye-bye for now. <laughs> that was fun, Dana. That Thank was you, really fun.